Francisco was the epicenter of the summer of love in the 60s, and Hall of Fame photographer Jim Marshall captured the essence of life at the intersection of hate, Ashbury, and rock and roll. And all of it is in this brand new book titled Hate, Love, Rock, and Revolution. Photos from the book currently on display at the San Francisco Art Exchange uh, in uh, Union Square. And joining me this morning are Theron Cambridge from the Art Exchange and also Jim Marshall's assistant for some 13 years, Amelia Davis. And thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for having us. Amelia, you uh, you worked with Jim for a long time. In fact, you're the sole heir of his, of his estate. The way that this book came about is very surprising. Tell us about that. Well, when I was cleaning out Jim's apartment, I found an original book that mm -hmm. he had mocked up. He made the photos and pasted and them in. Um, and it was titled The Hate. And he had always wanted to do this. And uh, never the pub no publisher ever would publish it. And this mm -hmm. was back in 1976. So he was looking at it 10 years later. And in actuality, I think it's better that it's coming out now because we have 50 years later to look back at how it really um, transformed not only the city of San Francisco, but worldwide. Why do you think it's better now to come out now? Because I think we have more time to step back and really look uh, at it okay. and see how what happened during that time has changed um, history and mm -hmm. really affected us today still. What were, your what were your thoughts when you were going through the apartment, cleaning things up, and all of a sudden you come upon this? I just, <laughs> I was amazed, yeah. but, and, and really thought this was something very important to Jim, because mm -hmm. obviously he took the time to mock it up, Right. and uh, and so we were able to finish what Jim started. That's fantastic. If Theron, now you're, you have the exhibit at the San Francisco Art Exchange. Tell us a little bit about Jim Marshall and the impact that he had, not only on rock and roll, but culturally, taking his photos. Well, I think about uh, Jim is sort of like a combination of painter and give big game hunter. Mm -hmm. The camera, he's looking around, and I think he just couldn't not capture things that impressed him. And he had so many interests, so, and his interests were in people. Yeah. The and, fact and, that, you know, these, I mean, these photos the are photographs tell the fantastic. story. He was not only interested in the people, but he was interested in how he expressed who they were. Yeah. And you can see who they are in the photographs mm -hmm. in, in, a, in a very personal way. We see, we see basically rock and roll hierarchy here. I mean, this right. is the royalty of rock and roll that Jim had access to. Why do you think he was able to, to gain the trust of so many different rock and rollers? Uh, he, he became their friends, mm -hmm. and he got their trust, and he never, ever betrayed their trust. So they knew that if Jim was there, uh, they were safe, yeah. and they could really open up and be themselves. And I think Jim really prided himself on that fact. Jim passed away at the age of 74 back in 2010. Yes. Uh, who are his favorite artists to photograph? Hmm. Um, hands down, Janice Joplin. Really? He yeah. said uh -huh. because, in Jim's own words, she wasn't the prettiest chick, but the, 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 camera, the camera loved, loved her. her. Yeah. And so he, I think, has some of the best Janice Joplin photos. It really comes, comes through. Mm -hmm. her, her inner beauty radiates out. Yeah, and, and you could tell from the photographs that she really felt comfortable with him. She I think did. it was mutual affection, and uh -huh. you'll see that in a lot of his photographs. There's affection that he has for the subject, and there's return reciprocated affection that the subject had for Jim. And the impact that he had, again, not only just in rock and roll and in music and entertainment, but culturally, is being celebrated today because today is Jim Marshall Day in San Francisco. Mm, that's that right. <laughs> in fact, the proclamation is going to be issued today. Today. That's fantastic. Yeah. Why, why do you think the city recognizes him in this way? I think he's documented pieces of history that mm -hmm. will never, ever happen again. And so we learn in the future by looking at the past. And this shows us what happened and how it's transformed us. And it's very important, as we said, it, it reverberates worldwide. Yeah. So even though it started at, at Haight-Ashbury, you can still feel it worldwide. We want to close here by taking a look at some more of the photos, if we can, and just have you comment a little bit on, on some of the photos that we're taking a look at. So if we can pull those up. Jimi Hendrix, of course. Uh, there's Janice. Right. And of course you saw the Beatles and that yeah. was their last concert at the Candlestick, Candlestick Park. That's right. Yep. They just celebrated the 50th anniversary of that with the big Paul they McCartney concert. Sure Jimi Hendrix yes. was in many of Jim's photos. He, he is and this is at Monterey Pop and most people think this is a live performance but this was, dur uh, this was during soundcheck. Oh really? And was the only <laughs> photographer and he said he just he loved and there it was. That's you fantastic. Know?
Well, all of these photos and much more captured in this brand new book and also an ex exhibition at the San Francisco Art Exchange. You can catch it all until the end of November. Is that right? That's there? correct. Okay, fantastic. We'll look forward to that. And thank most you so much for joining us. All the photographs, most of the photographs in the show have never been seen before. So this is a very, a very fresh exhibition of Jim's work. That's yeah. fantastic. Well, thank you so much for bringing it to us. Thank we'll you. be right back. Thanks. Thanks, buddy.